Hello and welcome to the first tutorial where we will be looking at Adobe Flash CS6 and in particular the skills and features of Flash that will allow you to complete the animation section of your coursework. Now first of all what I'm going to be looking at is the mark scheme for the Year 11 GCSE Unit 4 Control Test. So if I just open the mark scheme here and I'm just going to scroll up to the animation section. Now what we can do here we can have a look at what we need to do in order to get the marks for this section. So we know that we have to create an animation a flash animation that will be put into our PowerPoint presentation. So if we have a look at group C here our flash animation it must have at least three frames showing movement which means that we must have basically three keyframes in our animation in which the image objects or uh, object or text changes slightly hence the animation so if we have a look here at group A what we must do we must use at least three of these techniques so there's cloning, onion skinning, tweening, rotoscoping, grouping, backdrops, looping, 3D and other skills as well but we're going to be mainly looking at onion skinning tweening, rotoscoping and backdrops. I'll be showing you some other skills as well but from this list those are the skills we'll be looking at. And if I go down now to the additional technique section there are nine marks available for doing any of these skills but obviously they're broken up into different sections. There's some which you can get from your PowerPoint, some from the animation, movie effects and sound effects. Now the key one here, and what's really an easy mark, is actually to add three extra keyframes to make your animation more complex. Also, another one here that's quite easy to get is looping or repeating techniques. However, if you do choose to use this particular skill, then you will suffer a loss of quality of your animation when you put it into the PowerPoint presentation. It's not a really big deal, but it, you've got to weigh up your options whether you want the extra mark or you want to lose some of the quality in your animation. So that's just a basic breakdown of the mark scheme and I'll be referring to it as I use the different skills. So when I show you cloning, I'll look at it on the mark scheme and see how we get the marks for it. So I'm just going to minimize that down. And what we're going to have a look at now, if I just open Flash CS6, what we're going to be doing is having a look at the basic introduction of the interface and how some of the basic features work. So, this is the screen that you will have presented to you when you open Flash. We get the choice to open recent items. We also get the choice there to create a, new, a totally brand new document. There's also some quite useful tutorials in here if you want to have a look through those, just sort of covering some of the basics of Flash. But what we're going to do here is we're going to open an ActionScript 3.0 document. So I'll click that and what happens is it opens up and I've got all the features and the tools that I will need to make my animation. Now, the first things first, here are, or here is, our stage. Now what the stage is, imagine that when you've finished your animation and exported it to be played in QuickTime or any other type of movie player, this represents the screen. So whatever's on it, at whatever time, will be shown as part of the movie. So that's the stage, and this is where we can import our objects, shapes, images, text, all the things we need to form our animation. So that's the stage, and obviously we can zoom in up here, we can zoom in to make our stage larger, or we can zoom out to make it smaller, and that's quite useful actually when you do import some images that you've uh, downloaded from the internet they will be quite big so you'll have to zoom out and then you'll have to scale them down so that's quite useful to know now uh, the timeline here if I just go down to here this is the timeline and it's probably one of the most important features about flash now what the timeline does is it allows you to check the progress of your animation by dragging the playhead which is here over the individual frames now the most important thing about the timeline is that it allows you to add images, objects or text to specific frames on the timeline. So this is useful because you can know exactly when that image or object will appear in your animation. 
Now the timeline is broken up into individual frames. If I just show you here. Okay, so obviously there's five, ten. So you can be really, really precise with where you want to put your image or text onto the timeline. Um, and these represent movement of your animation at a particular moment in time on the timeline. The timeline also has layers, which you can see here. And what I can do is rename that. So I could say background or whatever the case may be. It's totally up to you. Um, and I can also hide that layer. I can also lock the layer so I can't actually change anything on there. So basically the important thing about layers is that they're useful because it allows you to put objects on top of each other without accidentally editing or changing one of those objects accidentally. So like you would in Microsoft Office where you can send things to the back, the same with Photoshop, how they use layers, you can put them on top of each other. It works exactly the same way. Now, on the right hand side here are your tools and this is the toolbar where we've got a selection tool where we can click on our objects on the stage and move them around. We can also um, click them to edit them and change them if we want to. Now we've got a transform tool here in which where we put our objects onto the stage we can resize them, we can rotate them or skew them, we can distort them, things like that. We've also got the text tool here, if I just click that and click on the stage and I can start typing so we can add text there and um, just delete that we've also got shapes here you can see from the little black arrow in the corner that we can actually open that up and there's a collapsible menu with other options so I'm going to use a rectangle there just drag the shape onto the stage and I've got a rectangle I can also put an outline on it if I want I'm going to show you this because the properties option here is really, really, really important. Anytime you add an object or something to the stage, whether it be text or an image, it has properties. And obviously those properties can be changed. But you need to click on it first, then go to the properties palette. And I can then change the color. If I want, I could add a, an outline to it, which we call a stroke. So if I delete this, and I go to shape tool and properties I can add a stroke there so I can change it to about 10 I can enter that in myself if I want by typing it to be more precise 10 and I can then change the color if I want the outline maybe I say red um, and so when I drag that shape on there that's exactly what it does it gives me the fill color of purple and the stroke or the outline of red and I can use my selection tool double click on it, select all of it and move it around, put it up in the top corner, whatever I want to do. So those are your tools. And you've also got lots of different options up here, which we will be looking at as we go through the tutorials, um, which will allow you to change things, help with your animation, add different kind of effects and all that sort of thing. So that's a basic introduction to Flash. And I'll be going through the skills and looking at the mark scheme as we go through.